Let's take a look at integrating Mosaic and Paradigm together. We'll start on the Mosaic side. We're going to go into our Network tab here, and underneath our Network tab, we're going to assign a Paradigm IP address. What I'm going to do here is select this field and type in the IP address of my primary Paradigm processor. We're just going to use the default 10.101.10.101. On the Paradigm side, we're going to do something very similar. I will come over here, right-click on my Mosaic Shows, and select Add Mosaic Show. I'll come over to the Property Editor here, and I'm going to change an IP address for Mosaic. We'll use the Tessera that I'm using in my Mosaic config, 10.101.111.223. Once these are configured, we'll be able to have these two products talk to each other. In Mosaic, we'll handle all of our interactions with Paradigm through the Trigger pane. If we go over to Trigger, we have the option to add new Paradigm indicators. This will now trigger something in Mosaic off of the status of something in Paradigm, either a preset, a group, a channel, a wall, a macro, or an override state. Most commonly, you'll be working with presets. In Paradigm, if you go to the Sheets page, you'll see all of the preset numbers listed here, regardless of what the name is. Mosaic is going to work primarily with preset numbers. So you come over here, select a preset, and then assign what space it's in. We can then choose what state we want to listen for, whether it's activated, deactivated, or altered. Mosaic also has the ability to have actions which can control Paradigm. If I go down to Action and add a new one, I have a Paradigm field. This has similar options for preset activation, deactivation, record specific preset, group set intensity, channel set intensity, and wall, macro, and override functions. Again, you'll select one of these, set a preset number and a space number, and be able to send commands to Paradigm. In Paradigm, most of the mosaic interaction will occur on either buttons or macro steps. Let's take a look at a button station. When I open up my button station and right-click to set a control function, I now have an object type for Mosaic Show. You'll see a complete list of Mosaic features for within Paradigm. The first options are Mosaic Scene Release, Start, and Toggle, the ability to customize a text slot, Timeline Pause, Timeline Position, Rate, Release, Resume, Start, and Toggle, and the ability to set TPC Page, screen brightness, and state. Let's select a timeline toggle. I can then choose which Mosaic show I'm going to be working with. A Mosaic processor can talk to a single Paradigm processor, but a Paradigm processor can talk to multiple Mosaics. I select which one I want to work with, and I hit OK. Then I come over to finish my programming in the Property Editor. You'll notice it's already added our control functions and our options, but what I need to customize is what timeline number I actually want to work with. I can set my information here, and I can set a release time if necessary. If you scroll down, you'll notice there are also indicator states for Mosaic. Released, Running, Paused, and Hold at End. This gives you the ability to customize any of the indicator functions for the Paradigm system. If you're looking to integrate Mosaic and Paradigm together, there are a couple of things you should keep in mind. If you want to play a Paradigm preset, and any time that preset plays, have a Mosaic timeline also run with it, I would recommend doing that programming in Mosaic. At that point, Mosaic can listen to the state of that Paradigm preset and trigger no matter how that preset was started. If you're looking to use Paradigm as a UI to control a Mosaic, then you're probably going to be better off doing your programming in Paradigm. At the end of the day, though, it really doesn't matter, and choose whichever method suits your programming style or project.